Hello, and welcome to part two of our post-processing videos from our night sky workshop at Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, the first part of this was uh, Lars showing us how we merge images that we took uh, sequentially in order to get rid of noise using the program Sequ excuse me, Sequator. And so uh, I did that following Lars' uh, guidance there, and I created this image right here. Um, and it's a stacked image, and I looked at it, and it has, boy, it's done a real good job of getting rid of the noise. And then this image is the one where we took a long exposure. Uh, if you'll remember where I counted down 4 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, I did that to, or 13 seconds in order so that we could see a little bit inside the forest so it wouldn't just look like a black silhouette. So now we got to merge these two images uh, in order to make it uh, just more special in my opinion. And a couple things I want you to notice right off the bat. Uh, the EXIF information here, 258 minutes, and I think that's exactly 4 minutes, 13 seconds. ISO 3200, it was very dark there. Uh, if it wasn't so dark, I'd have probably used a, a lesser ISO or I'd have gone for a much longer exposure, but since we're all standing around doing it, I didn't want to go any longer than four minutes. Um, but the one I wanted to show you here is the sequator image. So when you merge these um, images in sequator, it screws with the EXIF. The output file isn't the correct EXIF information. It shows the right f-stop, 2.0, but it's saying 120 seconds at 6400. That's not correct. What, what I exposed was 20 seconds ISO 5000. Not sure why it screws with the EXIF information, just more interesting than anything else. But anyway, now to merge them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control. I'm going to highlight both of them. Now I'm going to open both of them in Photoshop just by double clicking on them. So they're both open. So I want to use this sky and this lake reflection. Really nice lake reflection, isn't that? I mean, you can see the core and the colors. Boy, that was just perfect. And uh, I don't want to use this foreground. So here's the foreground, and this looks good. You can see into the forest. It's got some color. You can see some of these trees. So what I have to do now is mask out this foreground from this picture. The way I'm going to do it, and there are several ways to do it, but I'll show you the way I'm going to do it, is I'm going to create a duplicate layer just by right-clicking and going duplicate layer. So now I have two layers right there. Come over here, select all. Now I've selected this whole picture. Edit, copy, come back over here. Now by hitting Control v I'm pasting this image in on top of these two, and now I have three layers. I'm going to grab this middle layer and I'm going to then hold down my mouse button and move it up so now that I've got this layer, this layer, then this layer. There you go. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry. If anybody said bless you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So the way we're going to mask out this... Uh, bottom area here is I'm going to take my quick selection tool and I'm just going to start grabbing this area down here. You can see it grabbed too much. I only wanted it to grab this area so I'm going to hit Alt which subtracts my mask. There we go. Come, Oops. <laughs> it's being obstinate. Let's start up here and see what I'll do. And there we go. So I'm going to add to my mask up here. So I don't want this tree. And then I'm going to hit shift because I don't want it to be continuous. And I'm going to grab down here. It's still being, it's just not enough contrast here, so I'm going to have to kind of cut it out from the middle. So you see I really haven't done a very good job of it, but I've, I've given the good starting area. And so now I've got the sky and this mask, but I don't have it refined. And to refine it, I'm going to hit Select and Mask right here. And I'm going to use this tool right here, Refine Edge Brush Tool. It showed up maybe about four or five years ago. And with every update of Adobe Camera or of Adobe uh, CC, this thing gets better and better. So what you do with this tool, this brush, is you go over the edges 
in your mask that you want it to be perfect, the detail areas. So that's what I'm doing right here. And as you can see, I'm telling it, hey, you got to refine this area right here. And it is just doing an excellent job at picking what I want picked and not picking what I don't. So I'll keep doing it down here. Now here you got darks on darks, so this is difficult and tricky. So I'm going to go over it a couple times so they can really get the idea of what I want here and what I don't. There we go. It looks like it's done a pretty darn good job. I'll look around because it's hard, very hard to go back once you've done this. So it looks good. So now I'll say OK. And there's our mask. And now I'm going to want to, I've selected the sky and the reflection. And I'm going to want to mask out this area right here. So I'm just going to hit this little button right here called Add Layer Mask. And boom. And it's done a pretty darn good job. It has, but um, one thing it's done here, if I'll look close, down here where it was dark on dark, it didn't do that good a job. I mean, it did a pretty darn good job, but it, we have this white still protruding on the edges. And that's just a no-go. There's probably different ways of dealing with that, but here's the way I'm going to. I'm going to turn off my two masks here. I'm going to highlight this middle layer and I'm going to go select and, or excuse me, filter, camera raw filter. I'm going to take this into camera raw. Now, I don't really need all this highlight and all this white and that's really what's causing the problem down here so I'm going to completely get rid of the whites and it seems fine because I still got all this still looks the way I want it to look and I'm going to up my shadows just a bit and I'm going to take down the highlights too. Again, that's not really messing a little bit. I don't want to take too much. I want you to still kind of see some definition here, but I'm going to take that down a bit. Take my exposure down just a tad because I'm going to be able to work with it once I create my image. I'm going to see how that looks now. Back there, turn these two back on. And so it helped but not still not quite good enough. So I'm going to turn these two off again and I'm going to do it again. Filter, camera raw filter. Just completely come down with the whites. Come down pretty darn hard now with my highlights and up with my shadows. And let's go back in. All right, one last adjustment. Now it's almost got rid of it. Go image, adjustment, brightness. And I'm going to start taking down the brightness on that right there until you can't see that anymore. Now let's take a look. And there we go. Now, Right now this is a little dark, darker than we'd like, but that edge is important. So I'm going to go ahead and merge these now. I'm going to say Layer, Flatten, and I'm going to show you that when that information though is all still here. I'm working with TIFF files, and so now that it's all flat in the way I want it, I'm going to be able to go Filter, Camera Raw, be able to bring those shadows back up and I'm still got a pretty darn good forest in here right see that so I'm still able to get the detail in there that I want you know and I can play with that and post process it and do what I need to do but I'm just showing you I can get that 
and you've seen plenty of, um, or you, you will be able to see plenty of images uh, on my feed that show you how I post-process Milky Way images. So I'm not going to go over that over and over again. Uh, and you saw how Lars did a little post-processing of it. But there's a couple things here that I'm sure that you'd like me to show you uh, that I think is going to be more important for this. And one is this distracting, nasty tree, right? I mean, you just... It doesn't go with the rest of the image at all. Uh, a lot of you probably had it because it was sticking right out there. And if you're using a wide angle lens, there it is. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of this. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to select around here. Now I'm going to stop right there. And that's because I know how, in fact, I'm going to do it again because I don't want it touching any part of that. Because if it is, then what I'm going to do is going to leave this black smudge that I don't want. So I've selected it all. Now I'm going to go to my patch tool. I have it on content aware, I believe. And so I'm going to drag this into an area of the sky that I want it to use to content aware fill that area. So right about here, right? And I'm going to pay attention to like these these purple lines are air glow that's caused from, um, what do you call it, uh, moisture in the air. And I want those to be consistent. Select, deselect, and look at what a great job it did. I'll just be able to use this tool now to get rid of these. Now this guy here is still a really bad distraction and we got to get rid of it. But if I would have included it in this, because it's touching right here, Content Aware would have left a big smudge. And uh, we're still going to have a smudge, but we're going to deal with it differently. So I'm going to select this again. I'm going to be real careful, and I'm going to kind of go up here like a little point of a tree and grab that. And now I'm just going to right click and say Fill Content Aware. See how that does. And how? <laughs> Do you see how it made the top of a tree there? It just did. This is a smart little program. And now we've got a little bit of something right there that we obviously got to get rid of. But boy, that's that's pretty nice though, isn't it? So we'll just use this guy right here, our little patch tool, to get rid of that. And that right there. And it left a little bit on the edge here, and we don't want that. And there we are. How cool is that, huh? Smart little program. And there we go. We've got the basis for our image. Now we can start processing it like we normally do. A couple things I'll tell you. I would want to uh, darken this area right here. I don't want that to be a focus. I want to warm this a little up a little bit. Since it's there, you want it to look right. Uh, I want this line to be prominent because this is what is guiding your eye. Also, I'd want this line to be prominent and this line to be more prominent, although not too much. This is a fantastic pinwheel image. And I don't know if you've seen, if you've been following me on Facebook, but this, this image has got real well, real well received, including by the guy who taught me uh, night images, Royce Bear, had real nice things to say about it. He said it was uh, as nice an alpine uh, nightscape as, as he's seen, which just blew me away because he's just a remarkable, remarkable photographer, remarkable nights, nighttime photographer. And But it, it is a great image just based on the picture that we took. And that what, what people are responding to is the pinwheel. Your eye is going boom, 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 boom. So as you post-process that, keep that in mind because it's a real important part of this. Okay, and I won't go into the rest of it, and that'll be the end of this. And uh, I really thank everyone for coming. We had a good time. Uh, we're going to do it again in September. In September, this is going to be going straight up and down. And that's going to happen about 10 o'clock at night. So just to let you know. All right, you guys have a great one again. Thanks for uh, coming to American Photo Trucks Workshops. We, we really enjoy it. We're doing these, and we're really glad you guys come. Thanks.